I've moved here since March, and due to the pandemic and financial difficulties, I have not completed my man cave yet. Cause I'm never gonna stop the rain. Without a proper place to do my reviews, I often wonder, should I just stop until I have my man cave? Me. What's going on, my fellow web slingers? Brooklyn Wolf back at it again with another review featuring Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man, and last but certainly not least, I'm pretty sure you can all figure out who it is Daredevil. We'll get back to him in a little bit, but don't forget, we also have Spider Man. Before I go on, I want to address that I won't be using the official Spider Man 3 figure produced by Hot Toys due to the fact that I only have one of this figure, and I never displayed him, so I'll be using the unofficial figure produced by Thunder Toys as his representative. The last time I did a review for Spider-Man was five years ago, and that was for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, also produced by Hot Toys. I am a huge fan of the character. I love the movies, I love the games, I used to collect the comics. Overall, just a great character. You're probably going to be asking, if I'm such a huge fan, why don't I have an army of Spider-Man? Well, that's because, personally, I don't think every look works. I'm more into the classic red and blue, with an exception here and there. Outfits such as the Iron Spider or the anti ock suit, they do look nice, but they're not nice enough for me to get. So it's a great time for Spider-Man collectors that have to collect every iteration of the character, and even better for Hot Toys. And oh boy, are Hot Toys and collectors going to be eating after No Way Home comes out. I mean, they've been eating before, but they're going to be eating even more, seeing as how Spider-Man has become the next Iron Man, and they're going to continually milk the shit out of him. This is footage from five years ago, and my opinion of it still stands today. It's a great figure with incredible articulation that, five years later, after every new iteration of Spider-Man that has released since then, just can't compete. There's no denying that the new figures look nice, but I want to have fun with my figures. My one hope for future releases, specifically for an Andrew Garfield 2.0, is that they shouldn't just only focus on the aesthetics, keeping it as close to the source material as possible, which is very appreciated, don't get me wrong, but to also prioritize fun for an action figure. I'm convinced that we've reached the point in toy design where you don't have to sacrifice one over the other. And why am I showing Soso -so Toys Blind Vigilante aka Daredevil? No reason. No reason whatsoever. 
I just wanted to show it, because I love the figure. So no special reason whatsoever. And New York represent, baby. so much a review as it is a retrospective where I reflect on the figures of yesteryear. So it's more of a reflectrospective. Reflectrospective. I like that. out there hunting for a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man or an Andrew Garfield Spider-Man and paying these exorbitant prices, don't. We all know they're going to get a 2.0. In terms of articulation, they have to at least meet the standards set by Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. And aesthetically, it has to meet the standards set by PS4 Spider-Man. And that's all I want. I don't need any fancy accessories, I just need a good looking Spider-Man with amazing articulation. I don't think it's too much to ask for. It's well within their capabilities. All they have to do is just care. Thanks for watching, webheads. I'll see you soon. Up, up, and away, web. They're watching us Yes, we are fly away They're watching us They're watching us